In this video, I'll be answering the question you see on the screen here from paper 33 from the year 2024 Cambridge A-level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for a different paper, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, so take advantage of YouTube, pause, rewind, whatever helps you out. Uh, if you find this or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, or even a share. In question nine, we have a rate of change question. Now, I find most students, the most difficult part of this type of question is all the reading, uh, getting all the information. Uh, and I think that's probably my worst part of being a teacher. Uh, I'm really bad at explaining how I read information, but I'll do my best. I'll go as slow as I can in this. Um, and explain my thoughts all the way through it. Okay, so they draw us a picture of a box. Uh, we have x by x by 10x. Um, nearly straight away, well, it, if you read into the question a little, you will see volume. So let me just, first of all, write the volume. It's um, uh, x by x by this. Uh, clean all that up, we will get 10x squared minus x cubed. Okay, I'll just, I just jot that down first thing is what I would do. Um, reading on into the question, it tells us that X varies, so X uh, moves basically with time. Uh, the container itself, the volume of the container decreases at a rate inversely proportional to T. Okay, that's something we can get into. Um, the container, the volume changes at a rate, so that's what they're talking about is dV dt there. And they say that's inversely proportional um, to T. So that means it's proportional to one over t. So inversely proportional does. And we could turn this uh, symbol into an equals, easily enough. Uh, that's dv dt equals um, a constant times this. So one over t multiplied by some constant. It's okay to leave it like this, uh, but I, I like that they told us that it decreases at this rate. So I would usually put a minus in here. It, it won't matter because you just find a different constant than me. So if I put a minus in here, when I solve this constant later on in the question, uh, whatever answer I get, uh, if you didn't put the minus in, you should get just minus of that, a different sign of that. So either way, I'll put in the minus though for now. Okay, re continuing to read on, they tell us when t equals one over 10. I've wrote that up here. Uh, the, the x is equal to a half. So this is a, a snapshot in time. At a certain time, one over 10, x is equal to a half, and the decrease in the rate of x is equal to 20 over 35. Now I've put a minus in here, because they said decrease, and this minus is important. So if you just can't get the right answer in this question, you're not sure where you're going wrong, it could be this minus. And um, they told you it's 20 over 35, it was, it was an extra little question inside the question. Uh, the decrease was important. We had to put that minus in. And then finally, uh, they, they just tell us the answer. They tell us this is what we want to get. So your job is to get to this point. Now, it is quite common this type of question. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna have um, formulas, you're gonna have rates of change, and we nearly always have to use the chain rule. And that's what we're gonna have to use here. We want the V dt, but we have V in terms of x's. So how do we do that? We, because I want to get dv dt to equate this, by the way. Um, I ha already have one dv dt. I want to get it again so we can put it equal to this and try and get an answer. So uh, I, I, want, I desperately want dv dt. The problem is they're in x's, so I can't do that. I'll go ahead and use the chain rule. And the chain rule is handy in whatever derivative you want. You can, you can adjust it and change it to any letter you want. Just, just any letter you want. In this case, X is the obvious one we would pick. Because I can do this part of it. And this part I can't do, but as it turns out, I want it in my answer. Okay? You want it in your answer. Um, so doing this, uh, the derivative of this becomes 2 times 10 is 20X. Sorry, 20X. Uh, minus 3X squared. And all that's still multiplied by this DX dt. And we're never gonna to touch that, because like I said, it's in our answer. We want, in fact, dx dt to equal something. So I can put the other side of this equals. I can now put this 
um, minus k 1 over t. And if you skip ahead a little, you can see that these are already, let me get out of the way a bit here. You can see that this is already similar to this. Let's just leave the, the x dt on one side and divide by this. So we'll get the x dt is equal to, let's see, minus k over t multiplied by 20x minus 3x squared. And that's pretty much the answer, except they don't have a k. So we still need to solve for k. That's where all these numbers up here are going to come in. Uh, by the way, we could have we could have solved for k earlier or before, like up in this line, I guess. Um, but I just wanted to show you this is where the answer was coming from. But now let's let's just get that last mark by finding out what k is. And they tell us everything here. They tell us t, x, and dx dt. So all we're left with is k. Um, so that becomes minus twenty over thirty seven replacing this one here, is equal to minus k over 1 over 10 multiplied, uh, let's see, a half, that goes in 10, a half times 20 is 10, a half squared is 1 over 4, so that's minus 3 over 4. Uh, have I got room here? Let's see, we multiply this across, this 10 will multiply, uh, sorry, 1 over 10 will multiply over, so it'll end up cancelling with that 20, leaving 2. And uh, this, if we turn that into four times the top, four times the bottom, we get 40 minus three. That turns into, let's see, 37 over four. Multiply that across, we'd get 37 over four. The, this 37 will cancel that. Uh, this four will end up uh, canceling into this and we'll be left with one over two. Hopefully you do that a bit cleaner than I did. I've run out of room a bit. So I get minus k is equal to half, or k is equal to minus a half. Actually, I've just noticed the problem with doing a big mess like this is you miss something. Uh, minus k is not equal to a half. There's another minus here I never adjusted for. So minus k is equal, minus k is equal to minus a half. k is equal to a half. Um, let's, let's just write this line again then. Um, it's it's going to be the same answer as this. Uh, dx dt is equal to minus a half, minus k, which is minus a half, is equal minus uh, the one. And I'll bring the two underneath and put it by this t. Two t multiplied by let's say twenty x minus three x squared, which is what we were looking for all along. And that's how you answer this question. I apologize. It's a bit messy there. Um, take your time doing that part if you weren't happy, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how you do this question. Let me clear this off and we'll do part B. In part B, they want us to solve this differential equation, the one they gave us in part A. That's, that's why they made sure we had it so we could do part B anyway. And ultimately, they want, to, they want us to get an expression for t in terms of tx. So at the end, they want t equals at some stage. Um, okay, where to begin? Uh, differential equation should be what jumps out to you here. We, they're, they're famously difficult to solve, except in, in the A-level, uh, in, in this course you're doing, and there's only one type of it. We only do a very simple type, and they always look pretty much the same. We're going to have a, a dx, a d something, and another d something. So these two d's here, and one on either side of the equation. We just have to rearrange it. So we just want to get all the x's on one side with, with uh, the dx on the top row and all the t's on the other side, again, with the dt on the top row. So I'll show you what I mean. All the x's are going to come up and join this dx. So we're going to get 20x minus 3x squared uh, dx, put a bracket around that, will equal, and I'll get all the dt's on the right. So the dt will come up with all the t's. There's only a minus 1 over 2 t. This minus 1 can go either side you want, by the way. Okay, so that's how we set this question up. You're gonna, probably going to get a mark for that, by the way. Just noticing this is how you start this question. That's a 2 there. Um, okay, next thing we do to solve a differential equation is we integrate both sides. So we integrate the left and we integrate the right. The left is quite easy to do. Actually, but neither are too bad. Uh, the integral of the left becomes, uh, let's see, 20x squared, and then we divide by this, uh, this new number. So we divide by two. 
minus uh, 3x cubed. So again, it goes up one and we divide by the new number. Uh, plus some constant, I'll call it constant one for now. Uh, on the right hand side, if I take out uh, the minus a half, that's a constant. So we can take that out, sorry, integral of one over t dt. This is a common integral. Um, it just becomes natural log of this one. So it's just in our log, in, in our formula table. So if I clean some of this up, we get 10x squared minus x cubed plus some constant is equal, let's see, minus a half will stay there, natural log of t. Uh, be a little careful when you deal with natural logs, they have to be positive. But earlier on in the question, they told us t is a positive, so it's bigger than zero. So that's fine. Um, when we integrate here, we got another constant, plus c2. But uh, if we just move this constant over, we get a constant minus a constant. Two constants combining just become one constant. So we'll just call it c. Often, you don't have to write these c's in, by the way. Just, you need one of them at the end, okay? You don't have to do them each time. I just like that. That's the way I think about it. Okay, so we have a, an equation here. Uh, they want t on its own, so you could just go ahead and rearrange this so t is on its own and uh, bring the c over and um, get the put put everything to the power of e that cancel out the natural log. The only problem is c. They never said anything about c. They want t in terms of x. They don't want c here. So let's solve for c. Uh, let's just rearrange it so it's c is equal 10x squared minus x cubed. Uh, plus 1 over 2 natural log t. Um, we have numbers for x and t. Go back into part A. They told us, I rubbed it out up here, but t, at, there is a certain point, a certain point in time, that t is equal to 1 over 10 and x is equal to a half. It's not every time it's equal to that, but remember, constants don't change. So all we need, we just need to find it once and then we find it everywhere. So at this uh, moment in time, we can find out what c is. So c is equal to, uh, that would be 10 over 4 minus 1 over 8 plus 1 over, 1 over 2 natural log, yeah, natural log 1 over 10. Uh, we clean that up a little, uh, we get c is equal, let's see, a 2 on top here and a 2 on the bottom. That becomes uh, 20 over 8 minus 1 over 8. That becomes 19 over 8 uh, plus a half natural log uh, 1 over 10. Okay, that's just C then. So if we just go back to this line, uh, sorry, this line here. Uh, remember, we want to solve for T. Let's move the C over actually. So we would get minus a half natural log T. I'm just writing this here. Is equal to, I'll write this again, uh, 10 x squared minus x cubed minus c but i now know what c is here's the so minus uh, 19 over 8 minus 1 over 2 natural log uh, 1 over 10. Uh, i just want to solve for t so let's uh, get rid of the minus a half we get natural log t is multiply this by minus 2 we get minus 20 x squared uh, plus 2x cubed uh, plus 19 over 4, I guess, uh, and plus natural log 1 over 10. You can do all this in one step if you want, if you are if you feel confident. Um, get e of both sides. Uh, e to the power of this is just t. And this side, e, and everything goes up here, basically. 20x squared plus 2. Yeah, we're pretty much finished. Um, I guess there's one small thing we could do. Uh, natural log 1 over 10. Um, that's the answer. That's a perfectly okay answer there. Uh, they wanted t, uh, they wanted uh, an expression for t in terms of x. That's perfectly okay. Uh, using the fact that there's a natural log and an e, you could clean this up a little. Uh, I don't know if it's worth me writing a whole new line, uh, but because this is adding on, a power adding on is like if this is multiplying. So, um, it's like e to the power of this is multiplying. Uh, well, let, let me write like this. t is equal e to the power of natural log 1 over 10 multiplied by e dot dot dot. <laughs> All of this, basically. Don't make me write it again. Uh, these cancel, and we're just left with 1 over 10. 
So basically, uh, to fix this line, I can get rid of that and put one over 10 here. Uh, I guess that's a little neater, but either, either of those fine. They, they, don't, they don't quibble about small things like that. Right, I hope that uh, helped you with this question. It's, it, was a, it was really two, two quite common and difficult questions combined together. Part A was a uh, rate of change, which comes up and it's difficult. And part B was a, a simple differential equation, which is very difficult. So hopefully I was able to help. If I wasn't, uh, put, say something in the comments, let me know how I can change, um, or just ask a question. Uh, thanks for watching, have a great day.